feet. It takes no effort just to just to breathe the strength. That's all you gotta do. Okay, ladies up here, you gotta be loud so I can hear you. And you out there, you do not be loud because I don't want to hear you. Okay, Pastor Matt, give us our first slide. Okay, let's go, Pastor Matt. Oh, 
down and put you in the middle. Okay, they're up by three, guys. Up by three. Let's make this one a little more just Should we? Should we do it? The winners are like, no! Actually, I think we will do that on my own. No! No! I don't know. I'm very glad I got on Okay, let's do one more. One more. Our final will do. Actually, let's do two more. That's right, you got two more. Let's do another leader's one. Who do I have? Julie! Julie, you're a leader, come up here. Julie, and Cooper are all in our fun part. Peace! Just staring at me, 
This is just the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. I want to hear it. All right. Here's what I want to do. Before we get to announcements, I want everyone to stand up one more time. And I think that game helped. Um, but I just wanted everyone to, it's okay. We're safe here. You, I know you've been stuck inside forever. But I think people have just forgotten how to act when you're outside the house. So we're just going to take a 20 second dance break and then we're going to do my favorite dance. Okay, so I'm sure who's good. Who, who can show all my favorite dances? Anyone? Who knows it? Now that's close. Amy! Yeah. Amy's doing it! Amy's the guy. Thank you. Marquise is doing it. Marquise. Marquise. Yes. It's the big man. You ever have a used car sale? And they go like this. They got that car in 20 seconds. And I'll ever do that at the seat just to lose that button. Ready? Set. No, that was good. Hopefully you guys um, loosened you up a little bit more and, and got you in the, in the environment to dance. That is my favorite dance. Most of these kids is the easiest white person dance in the entire world. You really can't do it wrong. Like, you just move your arms and sit up and down. Like, really can't fail. All right, so we got a few announcements for you. I know it's been a while. Um, but if you have something to take uh, calendar out, there's just a few things that we want to make you aware of. Take your whole calendar out. <laughs> your whole calendar out for two days. June. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Like, everything's canceled. June 14th, graduation Sunday, um, right here at Hybrid Tabernacle Service. Um, so if you are a senior, make sure you let us know because we want to honor you and that you are there this Sunday. And if not, still come and support your senior. It's going to be a really cool time. Um, then June 14th, after service that night, we're going to have a hangout with uh, Pastor Matt and Liz in our house just for the seniors. Um, just kind of recognize them and hang out with them a little bit. So we'll give you some more information about that. And then August 3rd through 7th is... All capital letters. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you don't know, we got um, Ohio Youth Ministry Summer Camp. Well, every year, but last year, like in grand fashion, we brought 40 students, and it was awesome. Um, so this year, um, yeah, we brought 40. Yeah, we brought 40. Because I had a guy on beer pink. It was terrible. I don't remember specifically the number. Um, so. It is the 3rd through 7th at camp. So now, if you haven't been watching our live stream, we've asked you guys to, if you are interested in going to camp, first, go to our Instagram page, at How We Student Life, um, and fill out a questionnaire that we have. Um, there's a few questions on there, just so we get a better gauge of who's going to be going to camp. And then we're going to be giving you the information on how to register for camp. Now, I know it's a little bit late, but there's a reason for that, because Ohio Youth Ministries doesn't know exactly what's going to happen with camp yet. I'm not going to tell you all the details. Liz and I are a part of the, we're the directors for the camp that we're going to be going to, so we're in charge of it all. Um, so we have a meeting every single Monday. Um, where we're just listening. That's Matt, you're the assistant. And, yeah, she's the director. I'm the assistant director. Yeah. She's yeah. the director, actually. Um, so every, uh, every Monday we have a meeting, and uh, we're still getting information out. Um, but one thing we do know, if camp happens, which is still scheduled, it is going to be a combined middle school and high school camp for us. So everyone's going to get to go together this year, uh, which is going to be really cool and really fun. Uh, but they've been throwing around a few different possibilities of what it looks like with um, Governor DeWine's recommendations for camps. Uh, but we're just trying to get a gauge on what's going to look like. But as of right now, Mark your calendars from the third through seventh. Just block it out. Just put a black. Like I'm not doing anything else that week. I'm not doing no baton twirl camp. I'm not going. For, I'm not going camping with Grandpa. Like nothing else. I'm going to camp. Now it might change. It might look a little bit different. We don't know exactly yet. But once it gets a little more solidified, we will get you guys the information on how to register and things like that. Everyone got it. On your head, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we were going to camp until last Tuesday week. And we have already. So we already that. have the groups. Yes, I already have over 40 group holes. Like, we've got the space um, for you to go. That's not going to be an issue. It's just a matter of we're just waiting to see what they decide to do before. Because I don't want everyone to register and then something changes or something like that. We'd rather just hold on a little bit and then go from there. So, uh, that's August 3rd, June 7th. And then lastly, text at Highway SL to 81010. That's the best way to stay connected. Also, find us on Instagram at Highway Student Life. 
uh, on YouTube, Highway Student Life. How many of you guys got to watch some of the videos that we put out through the, um, the quarantine time? Yes, we, we hope that you guys enjoyed those uh, different things that we did. I'm trying to think of, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. Oh, everyone turn to the sound booth and wave because we are live streaming tonight from over there. So there might be some people still watching. Um, and you got, don't, don't go over there. I should not have said that. Keelan, I already saw you over there in the first two minutes that I turned it on. It was watching. You were comedy on the stream, Keelan. Like, you're here. So uh, we are still live streaming for those people who are maybe aren't comfortable yet coming, or maybe their parents don't want them to come. Uh, maybe they still want to uh, quarantine home. That's totally fine. So we're still doing that. We're still um, live on that and hanging out with all so those people. We can watch ourselves look like it works back. What? So we can watch this again. Yeah, you can watch it again. Don't watch it again. <laughs> and watch them. Okay, I'm going to watch right now. No, so uh, all those different things, but stay connected. Um, as of right now, we are still going to be continuing with in person services um, from now until otherwise, unless something changes. Uh, but we will let you know, and they might look differently every week, uh, but just stay flexible. All right, can you do that for me? Just stay flexible as we learn things, uh, as we do things. We're going to stay flexible. Now, if you have been watching our live stream, how many of you guys watch our live service streams? Anyone? Our live? Yes. Um, we mention every week that if you would take a screenshot and share it to your social media that we were going to give away a $50 gift card when we met in person. We are back in person. So at the end of the service, we're going to reveal to you the winner of that $50 gift card of your choosing. Um, I know a lot of you guys did it, and uh, it was a good, good turnout, but that's the best way to share um, that stream for everything else. But Right now, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Because normally during this time, I'll tell you to find, stand up and find three people you haven't talked to yet. But I don't really want you talking to people. You should be well, getting close to people. Hey! Just do that. Yeah. Just do that. Everybody just stand up and go, hey! hey. hey. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so I got one cool thing before we head into um, worship real quick. During, this is, I'm excited for this, during quarantine, during our, um, social media time, there was someone who popped up on our YouTube page who we did not know who they were. Their name was Clorox. Now, we, some of you know? Some of you know, some of you don't know. So we made a video actually last week about who Clorox is. How many of you guys want to know who Clorox is? Raise your hand. So we made a special video, put your hand down. Don't forget, if you don't know it, don't say that during the video. You'll find out real quick. So, let's find out who Clorox is. All right, we are at Clorox's house right now. Uh, we just pulled up, so we're going to reveal to you. I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Roll, please. Who is Clorox? Genuinely, no idea, but I found out I was like, 
Oh, if you don't know Chloe, she's the smallest, quietest person in here. And she's out here trolling us with a cross <laughs> on YouTube. Hey, Chloe! Like, you're never gonna go now! You're never gonna go now! I don't know what it is. Uh, but I was cool and wanted to let you know who Clark was. Clark was Chloe. Clark Clark. Um, and But I do totally relate to what she said in that video, where she said she wanted to watch the videos but still be anonymous. That is 100%, I understand that. Like, have you seen live videos on Facebook? I refuse to watch them because I don't want people to, like, when you watch a live video on Facebook, it tells people that you're watching it. And I don't like that. Like, I don't want you to know what I'm watching. Like, it'd be like, Amy Bowman is watching with you. I'm like, I don't want to know that. Just let me watch my video in peace for Pete's sake. And so I, I relate to that. I'm gonna make, now, I'm gonna make a Clorox to Facebook account so I can watch live videos. And I'm just gonna jump on like random church videos and be like, Clorox is watching there. Like, who's Clorox? <laughs> and it's gonna be the greatest thing ever. All right, but thanks, Chloe, for just being fun and good support. Uh, but all right, everyone stand up for me, please. We're in transition right now. Uh, now, I know this is a little bit different. We're not gonna have a worship team come up here uh, with everything going on, but I still um, have something that I really feel God laid on my heart to share tonight. And uh, so we're going to take some time to do that. I'm not going to speak for very long, and we're not going to worship for very long, because y'all haven't been sitting at school for the last however long you've been stuck at home. So your attention span is probably smaller than small. Um, so we're going to do our best. But we still want to get in the right atmosphere uh, and just in the right mindset to worship God. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to put a worship song on that y'all know, um, that everyone is familiar with. And we're just going to ask that you just stay in your seat. You can sit down and pray. You can do whatever you want. Just worship, sing along. We're going to have the lyrics on the screen uh, as it's playing. And we're just going to spend some time doing whatever it looks like for you to get your heart prepared to hear from what God has to say to you. Like, that's what we want to do. We just want you to get your heart ready. Whatever that looks like. You may be new here. You're like, Pastor Matt, I have, I've never heard a worship song. I have no clue what you're talking about. That's totally fine. All the way that during this time, you just got to keep to yourself. You don't talk to anyone else. This is time to mess around. This is time to really focus on what God is going to do tonight. And I really believe he's going to just speak to us. So, everybody has to close your eyes. I'm going to pray. And when I'm done praying, we are going to enter into worship. Dear the Father, I thank you so much. God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that your spirit would come and fill this place. God, Lord, that you would just touch our hearts, touch our lives. Lord, that your spirit would just touch. Help us to hear from you. Ex Experience you like never before. Praise on your name. Amen. Let's worship. Before I spoke, Lord, you were singing all to me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, we overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. All oh, it chases me down, fights me.
Nobody won't kick down, lie won't tear down, come out to me. No shadow we won't light up, mouths we won't climb up, come out to me. Nobody won't kick down, lie won't tear down. would just be all over our lives tonight. God, I pray for those who are struggling with mental issues and, and sickness and hurt and anxiety, Lord, that your spirit would just come and overflow in this place to move in a mighty and powerful way. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. We thank you for the, what you're going to continue to do. We pray this on your name. And everyone said, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Have a seat for me if you could. The same seat that you've had. Hopefully, we'll try to move this down here. All right, well, welcome back to How Does Your Life it is. Man, this is just so good. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you guys feel, but this just feels so much better, right? Like I know some people are still watching out live, um, but it's so nice to be back in person and see all your faces. Some of you guys I've seen um, in like our Zoom calls we've been doing. Some of you guys I've actually seen in person. Um, just if you've come, kind of served at the church in that capacity or done things like that. But a lot of you guys I haven't seen in. Man, what's it been like three months? Like a long time. That's like like you could grow a plant in that amount of time. That's a long time. I don't even know. That's just the only frame of reference that I can think of. You could make cottage cheese if you sat it out in the sun for three months. Like I don't know what else you could do in three months, but um, that was about it. It's been a long time, but we're so glad you're back. Um, like I said earlier, I don't want to talk for very long tonight, but I really have something I feel like God wants um, me to share with you. And I, the plan is, um, I'm not going to share very long, so we have some time before 8 o'clock that you guys can still hang out and kind of talk. Because I know that's what you guys have been missing a lot. Um, and that's what you guys have been kind of missing out on. I know that's what I've been missing out on, all the different stuff. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it tonight. And uh, I'm going to talk about three lessons learned from the Rona. That's just what I like to call it. We're buds, me and the Rona. No, we're not. That would be awful because that would mean that I was sick. And I'm not sick. So three lessons learned from the coronavirus and, and all the stuff that's happening. So this is the first time back. I've been thinking about these things for a while, and I'm going to talk about these three things. And I want to say, I'm just going to hit on these briefly because I could preach a sermon on each one of these three points individually. But I'm just going to go through three things that I've experienced that I think that all of you guys have experienced. Um, it just things that we've all probably dealt with in the past month or two um, with ourselves. I hope this goes up and it keeps spinning. It doesn't go up at all. 
That's sad. Um, all right, so three things. So if you've got your Bible, I'm going to be looking at these three things. Um, I'm going to go through a few different passages. Just pull it out. But don't be on your phone. Don't be on Twitter or Snapchat. I know it's been a while since you've not had to be on your phone. Um, but if you could do that, that would be great. And just give me your attention for these next little while. I'm just struggling. It's been a while. Um, you know, someone put all that work just to pop this up and just fell down. That's just how 2020 has been for me. Put the mic just down. Give me a second. We've all been there, Pastor <laughs> Okay. I feel like I need to pray again or something. This has been a struggle. All right, so three things. I'm just going to get right into these. Um, so how many of you guys have enjoyed quarantine? Raise your hand if you like quarantine. Yes. Like, now how many of you guys hated quarantine? Raise your hand. How many of you guys have mixed emotions about quarantine? Yeah. Right? Like, that's kind of what I was. I liked it um, because there was a short period of time where I was working from home and I was really nice. I got to spend time, more time with my daughter and my wife. Um, and that was great. And, and then there were some aspects where I hated. Like, the whole quarantine, I just wanted to go to Texas Roadhouse and just shove my mouth in my face with rolls and cinnamon butter, yeah. but I could not do that. <laughs> And now that they've opened, I still have not done that, and I don't know why. But I have gone to hotel. But like, like, there's just so many things that I wanted um, to do, or so many things that I was just craving, or like I wanted that. It was so nice to be at home and, and kind of have that time where, where things just slowed down, right? Like everything was canceled. Um, you know, my wife didn't have to work at school. She didn't have to get up early. You know, my daughter wasn't going to take care of things. It was just kind of slowed down. Like all of these things were canceled. But at the same time, somehow everything got more stressful. Like for some reason, the first few weeks, I couldn't buy a chicken breast to save my life. Like there was no meat, there was nothing. I'm like, what am I gonna eat? Ramen noodles for the next three months? Like we're gonna die, we're gonna starve because I'm a terrible, terrible planner when it comes to grocery shopping. We never have groceries. It's like we're buying what we want for dinner like at 4.30 that night. Like we're like, what do you want? Like, uh, spaghetti, like, well, we don't have noodles, we don't have sauce. I'm like, all right, I'll go to the store and get it. Like, that's our life. So, when it comes to like a meat shortage for some reason, we're in big trouble. Right? So, like, the beginning of it was stressful, uh, and then just all the different stuff we had to live stream and, and things like that, and set it all up. And it was fun and it was good. But throughout it all, and now that it's kind of coming to an end, but not coming to an end, there's some things that I feel like as Christians that we can take away from this. Um, that really stick out to me. Like these are really obvious things that I think hit home with every single one of us when it comes to um, the uh, the after effects of the coronavirus and things like that. And you may have heard of these before, um, and that's fine. Just listen to me say them again because they're important. And uh, really, these are spiritual things. Like I'm not talking about like you need to plan ahead on your grocery shopping. I'm not here to give you like life hacks about how to survive quarantine. That's not it. I'm here to tell you our spiritual aspect of how we can learn and grow from what we've gone through. The first thing, if you're taking notes or something, is that I think we all learned that we aren't always in control, right? Like it feels like during the season, everything that I thought I had control over was just stripped away from me, right? If you're, you're a senior, then like the finals, the graduation, the prom, everything was just stripped away from you. Like if you were in school, if you were in track, I think I was talking to Nathan, and did you get to any of your track meets? Or you like did one, two, and then like all of the rest were gone, right? Like, and, and in that moment, it can be difficult to understand. And in life, especially in the culture that we live in, where everything is controlled by us, right? Like, I can now control uh, if I wanted to the temperature in my house from my phone from 500 miles away, right? Like, I could lock my doors with a smart lock, right? I can control who sees. Um, like there's things as I just saw one the other day. There's things as private Instagram stories, right? Like where you can share it with only a certain amount of people, and it's like a green bubble. You know, you can do that. You can do that. And I did that. No, I didn't do that. I would say I did that, and none of y'all saw it because none of y'all are my friends. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what happened. Uh, but like you can control who sees what, right? And like what goes out where. So in a situation where we have so much control, I think it, we all can realize that we aren't always in control and this could be in the spiritual aspect of things the things that that come in like the 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 aspect of us and god or other things but this is not taking god by surprise these last little while is not like super surprising to god where he's like well i'm not in control at all no he knew exactly what's going to happen but that doesn't mean that the enemy also had his hand in this right it doesn't mean that he didn't have anything to do with it john 16 33 jesus is talking to the disciples 
And he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world you will have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus promised that we were going to have trouble. Right? He didn't promise us this easy life. He didn't promise that we'd always be in control. He said, because of what I did, because I have come over the world, you can have peace. And I think it's important for us to understand that, that throughout this process, when everything seemed to be stripped away, when everything seemed to be out of our control, like I don't know where I'm going to go, like I don't know how I'm going to do my e-learning, I don't know how I'm going to do this, or all these different things, that we can still understand that we can still have peace because ultimately God is in control, even when it seems like we aren't in control. And a lot of times that puts a, a, a spirit of fear in us, right? Like it's afraid we're not in control. I like being in control. Like if you, like one of the things that I like, like we all have different things that we like control. Like for me, it's youth ministry. Like it's this service. Like if I don't have control over this, if someone else was running it, I would literally have an anxiety attack. I would just be sitting there like you guys were sitting there during the first charades with your hands in your and you were like, it's baking cookies, it's baking cookies. Like, come on, just say it. it's baking cookies. Like, that's how I would feel because I like to have control and I'm sure you have those different things. Second Timothy 1, 7 tells us, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. I know when things get wild, I know when things get out of our control, it can be scary, but, but God didn't give us that spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power and love and self-control. So that's the first thing. I think we, we all can realize that we aren't always in control. There's a lot of things that can be taken away from us in a matter of moments. Right? And it happens so fast. Right? Like, I literally went to Chili's on Sunday, and then the next day I couldn't go to Chili's. Like, that's just how it happened. And I think we all realize that we are in control. Number two, I think we all realize that we need each other. We need community. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as they see the day draw near. Now, for some of you, this might not click home right away because you can still stay connected with people, um, you know, through Snapchat or Instagram or FaceTime. How many of y'all FaceTime for probably more than an hour during this whole quarantine? Like, for sure. Anyone? Yes, most of you. Like, I don't know. When was the last time I FaceTimed more than two minutes? I have no idea. Like, because I just call people. That's, I don't understand. I'm, this is just a rant. I understand why people walk around like a store FaceTiming someone. It's like, just a normal phone call. Just why do you have to look at each other? Like, no, they're not showing them anything. They're just no, walking with it like this. Yeah, the they're not looking at the screen. It's, 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 it's Pokemon Go. That's really no, it's not. What's Pokemon Go? Right, but like we, we feel like we can connect you. Like if you play video games, you can easily have a community of people that you play with. Like if you do TikTok, you have people that you share. Like we can stay connected. But when it comes to the body of Christ, I think we all can realize that we need each other. Right? Because how many of you guys were forced to maybe um, FaceTime people from school, or the 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 best people that you could communicate with and to connect with were probably the people that you hung out with the most before that, right? That, that makes sense? Like it's harder to, to, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, it's harder to during quarantine to start up a connection with someone who you were kind of close to before than with someone who you are doing it, right? Like if you were best friend at school, you played uh, Call of Duty all the time together, when quarantine hit, like it was probably like no strike, right? But it was like, like me and Chloe, we were hanging out and we wanted to play video games together. Or like quarantine hit, we, we never played video games together. Quarantine hit, we're like, hey Chloe, you wanna join my clan? Like, some people and she's like yeah like it, it would probably be a lot more difficult right like it just wouldn't happen so probably during quarantine what happened is that the people who you connected with easily before were the people who you connected with easily during and most of those people some of those people might not have been the strongest christians right so none of those people might not be the people who lift you up the most who encourage you the most who, who do all those different things and, and so i think what happens is that we can all realize and look back and realize how important what we do right here right now is because it's a body of believers of Jesus Christ who come together to lift each other up. Now, it's important to have non-Christian friends to reach out to them. I'm not saying that this is the only community that we have, but I'm saying that this is important. That we 
need each other. Now, the fact that so many of you are here tonight, even with all of these restrictions, and even with all of these different things going on, is just a sign that how important it was. All right, you follow with me? We need each other. Proverbs 27 17, it's a very famous verse. It says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Right? As one person can lift up, can help someone up. And it's important for us to realize how important, not just student life is, but church in general, a body of Christ, a Bible study that you go to, believers in Jesus Christ, it's important. Because let's be honest, when you're not in that, it's probably a much harder struggle in life. So one thing we, we learned, we're not always in control. Two, that we need each other. And three, I think we all learned that we need Jesus. We just need Jesus. So Matthew 14, if my Bible app will not break, get yeah, my friend. Matthew 14, there's a story that I want to read out of you that really just kind of hit home for me in this. Now, I think it's so important for us to um, understand now during this time. I think whether you realized it or not, I think you realize that you need Jesus, especially during this quarantine time. All right, Matthew 14, 22, it says, Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat go ahead to the other side of the lake when he dismissed the crowd. So this is after Jesus said the 5,000 he sent the disciples away. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, finding a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far away from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. They were so frightened, they screamed. Then Jesus spoke to them, be encouraged, it's me, don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, you man of little faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. This story really stuck out to me, and I could have talked about a bunch of different passages on why we need Jesus, right? We just, we need him. But this one stuck out to me because I think it was a good example of what probably happened to a lot of us in here. Right, like, so Peter saw Jesus walking on water and said, Jesus, if that's you, allow me to do it too. Like, let me come to you. And Jesus like, all right, man, like, get out of here. And he got on the water, and he started walking. Right, I feel like that's a lot of times where we're at in our spiritual journey. Like, I really feel like I was telling our youth leaders earlier, like, I, I think, I know God had absolute control over this, everything that's happened, but I, I definitely think that the enemy had something to do with it as well. I think there's manipulation and things involved in that as well. Yeah, I really feel like, do you, do you all remember what the last sermon that I preached was before quarantine started? Anyone? I'll give you one dollar. Uh, no, I'm just guessing. I talked about, we started our Back to Basics series, and I talked about the Bible. And I encourage you to read your Bible. And we had a whole six-week series on the basics of your foundation of Jesus Christ, and then bam, it was all gone. Right, so I encourage you to read the Bible. Quarantine happened. Did y'all read your Bible? <laughs> Thank you for being honest with me. I wasn't expecting any answer to that. I wasn't going to make you answer, but really, that's what happens. And I feel like that's what happened. Like, in our walk with Jesus Christ, and in our the way that we go about it, I think sometimes church is something that helps us keep our focus on Jesus, right? Like like the things that we have going on, like me encouraging you to read the Bible, the devotions that we do together, all of those different things help us see Jesus, right? But just like Peter saw Jesus, that he was able to walk on him. But when Peter turned his focus off of Jesus, he began to drown, right? When he saw the storms and the waves and the things, he had doubt in his life and he went away. So I think what happens in our life is when Quarantine it, we, we, we focused a little bit less on Jesus and we probably focused a little bit more on other things in our life. And when that happens, that's when we begin to drown. That's when we begin to go down and we begin to be less like Christ in, in following. And I know a lot of, for some of you, it was a difficult time. Some of y'all probably, if you're honest, you didn't read your Bible very much. You, you spent too much time on TikTok or Xbox and, and you didn't do a whole lot of 
where some of y'all didn't do any e-learning, shame on you. My wife had to deal with people like you. It was not good. Right? Like some of us struggle. And I think we we have a few options here at the end of quarantine. I think we can look back and say two things. We can chalk it up to being in quarantine. That, oh, well, I just struggled in this area. Some of y'all were alone for too long. And you had some old sins rise up in your life. Or you were around the wrong people, talking to the wrong people, watching the wrong things, getting on the wrong websites, and you had things rise up. And you could very easily chalk up that to just quarantine and just try and keep going about your life. Right now, now that things are getting more on track, you're getting out more, um, you're, you're getting back to church, you can just say, go on. Or you could do what we probably all should do is look back and face it. Say, God, clearly I'm not where I need to be. Because when my stability went away, when the things that helped me went away, I sank, and some of us sank hard. I'm getting real tonight, and that's okay. Right? Like, I think you could either ignore and say, oh, it's 14, I'm, I'm, I'm moving better now, and better. or you could say, God, am I really where I need to be? Because when everything else went away, when things got difficult, I took my focus off of you, and I started sinking, and I started going down. Because I think if we just ignore it, we chalk it up to, oh, it's just 14, I'm, I'm back now, I think what happens is that when something like this happens again, or when you graduate from high school, and you go to a public university, and you don't have a Christian roommate, and you don't have everyone to wake you up for church in the morning on Sunday mornings, your parents drag you out of bed, you're going to find it real easy to get right back in the same situation that you were in the quarantine. If your faith, is your focus is not on Jesus, if you're not where you need to be, if we're not where we need to be, let's not just ignore it and say, okay, well, I'll get there now. Let's say, all right, Jesus, what is in my life that I need to take out? What was I struggling with in quarantine? What was I hurting with? What was making me drown? What was taking my focus off of you and putting it out of the things of the world? Because if we don't deal with that, if we don't let them go, if we don't move forward, and we say, God, I give them up to you, I'm taking my life, I understand that they're not important, I understand that what you have for me is better, then they're just going to keep rising back up. And we might get a few more steps on the water where we focus up our gifts for a little bit, but then we're just going to fall back down again. That we might walk a little bit more and, and fall down. Right? But really, what I want you to take away from this is the story is that, that Jesus, yes, did chastise Peter. Right? Like he, he did. He just straight up yelled at him. He's like, why do you have no faith? Like you were literally looking at me walking on the water, and then you doubted, like, oh man, should I be walking on the water right now and fell in? He's like, what are you doing, man? He, he didn't yell at him. And sometimes Jesus needs to do that to us. But he also reached down. And pulled him up. It wasn't like a situation where Jesus yelled at him, like, all right, see you down with the octopus down there, see you, and just walked away out of water. Like, see you, bro. No, he reached out, he helped him regain that faith. And that's what Jesus does. And that's what Jesus always will do in life. Sometimes we need to get to the point where we realize, God, I need you more than I thought I did. God, I'm not where I need to be. So I think if we take anything away from quarantine, it should be those three things. We're not always going to be in control. There's always going to be things in our life that take away. It could be your parents' decisions that they make. It could be issues at school. It could be sicknesses, worldwide pandemics. It could be anything. There's always going to be things in life that take away that. Two, I think we realize that we need each other. We need things like this to keep us stable. We need things like this to help us grow in Christ. Some of y'all didn't watch our live streams. Ah, oh, man, I'm just going to sound so deep, but some of y'all didn't watch our live streams on Wednesday night, and it shows. I'm just kidding. I have no idea how it shows. It's just not <laughs> Right? Like, but, but really, some of y'all lost away from that. And then lastly, we need Jesus. And I think, I'm hoping y'all realize that during the course. Not realize that I can do it without him, but realize, man, I need God now more than we need God as a nation. I talked about last Wednesday. If you've seen what's going on in our country, it is terrible. It's embarrassing. It's awful. And we need young men and women of God who know who they are in Jesus Christ to start standing up and making a difference. But if 
we keep struggling with things in the past, we keep letting those things bother us, then that's never going to happen. Everybody has to close your eyes. I'm going to close up and talk for too long. I'm going to have a rain. I'm sorry. These were just simple things that I thought about during quarantine. Just things that I kind of went through my head like, God, what are you showing us during this time? There, there could be a hundred more. I could have a bunch of different things that I could come up with that we learned, but but these are just some of the the basic things that I think we can take away. We go home tonight and say, God, how am I doing with that? So here's what I do. I just want to pray a quick prayer tonight before I go, but I want everyone to, I think just as an act of obedience with ourselves, I want us to be honest with ourselves for a second. I'm not going to ask you to do anything weird. I'm not going to ask you to do anything different. But I think some of y'all realize during quarantine that, that you are not in control and it, it scares you. You had a lot of anxiety rise up. You had a lot of depression. You had a lot of worry and fear. Some of y'all parents lost their jobs. That's terrifying. I think some of you in here realize that you needed the community of the body of Christ more than you thought you did. Maybe you missed out on some of these things and you realize how important it is. And lastly, maybe some of y'all realize that you're not as close to God as you thought you were. Because without church, without the things listening to up, you went a little bit away. So here's what I want you with every head bowed, with every eye closed, if you were here tonight, relate to any of those three things. If you could for me, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm not going to have you anything. If you could just raise your hand for me. This is just an act of obedience, of, of self-realization, saying, God, I realize what is going in my life. Because you could sit and go through this service and listen, and I could get this off the ground, not make you do anything, and then leave, and then nothing happens. All right, go ahead and put your hand down. Dear Lord, you, I want to pray tonight, but I'm going to give you guys just two minutes to get real with God right now. In your seat, I'm not going to ask anyone to come up. I'm not going to ask anyone to do anything. I want you to get real with God. Think about those verses that we talked about. Think about where you are in your life with Christ. Think about the things that you might need to let go. Think about giving God the anxiety that came, the fear that came from this. Because Jesus promised us peace. So here's what I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to turn the music up a little bit, and I just want you to pray. I'm not going to pray for you. I just want you to talk to God, get real with him, say, God, this is what's going on. And at the end of the two minutes, I'll come and I'll pray and we'll close and we'll hang out. But this is the most important thing we do tonight. Just praise you so much.
Before I pray, everyone still close your eyes. During quarantine, it was just you and God. No one else around you. What happened? Did you walk on the water? Did you start to sink? If you walked on water, great, keep walking. If you suck, Jesus is reaching out. He will pull you up. He will help you. But when it comes down to it, we need to have our foundation set. So when things like this happen, when, when everything else is stripped away, our hope and our faith is still in Jesus. Dearly Father, I thank you for these students in here. God, I pray for those who are in this place, God, who who have struggled during this quarantine, God, who it's been a difficult time for them, either emotionally or, or physically, God, Lord, that your spirit would just come upon them, Lord, for those who have fear, anxiety in life, Lord, that you would take away that spirit from them and give them that spirit of power, love, and sound mind, Lord, that you have given us peace, you have come, you have overcome this world, Lord, so that we could have peace in our lives. God, I pray for those students who needed this community, God, who missed it desperately, God, for those who are, who struggled, God, uh, with, with walking with you, God, who realized right now in this place that they needed you more than they thought they did. God, Lord, they weren't as solid with you as they thought they were. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen us tonight. We won't just ignore it. God, we won't just move past it, but we would face it in the face of Jesus. God, we would just lay it down at the foot of the cross and say, God, I need you to take this from me. I need you to move on so that I can become more like you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just Touch your spirit over all of us. Lord, this would just be a launching point for us. Lord, it would just be a launching point for us for that we would just go deeper, we would grow more, we would get stronger in you. Lord, your spirit would just abide with us in just a powerful way, God. God, give us opportunities to grow. Give us opportunities to continue to walk towards you, to be more like you, to be strengthened in you. Lord, that your spirit would be upon us in everything that we say everything that we do. God, protect us as we go tonight. Keep everyone safe. May no one be sick. May your spirit be upon us. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. Praise on your name. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, guys, you've got a little bit of time left before 8 o'clock to so meet you just to be able to hang out. We love you guys. If you have any questions, oh, we have the name of the $50 gift card. How many of y'all share the stream? Raise your hand. Addison, did you share the stream? Yeah? Do you want to pick out the name? No? Do you want to say the name? Do you want to say something? No. All right, drum roll, please. Our gift card is Andrew Service. Give it for Andrew. Yes, a few names a lot of times. All right. We love you guys. Stay connected. We'll see you either this Sunday or next Wednesday. Make sure you still social distance. Hang out for a little while. If you have any questions, please come talk to me. But we love you guys. See you next week.